probably never make it because of my action. Just haven't seen enough balls in that area from Junior Dalla hitting the stumps. There's too much wrong with me. Coaches would say I'm different, but they never really explained how different I was. All I really wanted was an opportunity to show people what I can do. It's Dalla again. Dalla's persistence is rewarded. Once again, Junior Dalla. He can't stop taking wickets. It's been impressive. And this is a massive breakthrough. You've got to like his attitude, Dalla. It's been the shining light. That is an absolute gem from Junior Dalla. You don't have to go to a traditional school. You don't have to have that silver spoon upbringing that you can go the long road in order to reach your dreams. Traditional success in South African cricket often comes via conventional pathways. Cricket may be a game of convention, but in Junior Dalla, you have the kind of professional that makes you look at the game a little differently. Mind and Field, brought to you by ProfMed, the intelligent medical aid choice for a diverse range of professionals. I grew up in Springs, uh, yeah, so a little small town in the far east Rand. A few of my friends that sort of lived in my streets, they were all into cricket, so sort of learned to bowl um, on a little concrete strip in one of my friend's driveways. When we used to play, I was just actually the fielder. I was like the little um, brave kid that used to dive on the cement, uh, you know, to get that one hand, one bounce type of thing. And that's how the, the journey to loving cricket started. So obviously being sort of Joburg, born and bred, growing up, uh, cr cricket was, was, was a big passion of mine, but soccer was actually my first passion. Yeah, so fortunate enough to go to a, a, a very traditional boys' school in, in Cares, King Edward VII School, which sort of gave me the grounding to take up sport, a very sport-orientated school, and traditional, uh, which focused on a lot of the respect and the, and the ethics behind how you play, play sport and play the game of cricket in particular. Being a younger brother at home um, and, and being a, quite a sporting family, whatever sort of sport was going on on TV, we replicated in the backyard, my brother and I. Cricket was obviously one of those, those games that we spent uh, playing in the backyard for, for many, many hours. Cricket was one of those sports that actually kept me and my friends uh, sort of busy um, on weekends. So we didn't get up to too much nonsense compared to um, a lot of the kids in, in that community, so it was quite important for me growing up. Coming from a traditional school like I did, um, you know, there's, there's difficulties in, in that as well, is that you, you're sometimes a small fish in a big pond. thought I was a, a sort of big boy arriving at, at, at CARES in, in grade eight and um, found myself in the C team at, at the school, which uh, sort of knocked me back down to size. And, sort of saw a gap in, in the spin bowling department so, and realised they had a little bit of talent in, in bowling, uh, bowling off spin. So I started uh, moving through the ranks and before I knew it, I was playing in the A side and, and started getting recognised in, in sort of some provincial teams. Yeah, then headed on to the University of Johannesburg, which produced a lot of cricketers and had a very strong side. And, and that sort of helped with my development into professional cricket. I think it depends on where you come from. Being from a small town and going to a school where we didn't actually have proper cricket coaches, it was my accounting teacher was our first team coach. All they wanted, you know, to fill a first team was someone that could either bowl, so it didn't even matter if you could bowl fast, just bowl, catch and be able to hit a cricket ball. I remember grade nine, grade 10, I actually started becoming sort of really good at cricket and you know, I used to go to these provincial trials back um, in the East Rand and I almost had the sense that I was better than a lot of the bowlers there, but I would always make it to the last round and coaches would say I'm different, but they never really explained how different I was. No one actually made me understand. Every single time I didn't make that team, I just kept telling myself, it's not a reflection on you, it's, you know, it's a reflection on them. 
I just kept saying they can only pick 15. They can only pick 15. It's not a reflection on you. Junior came from a, a background um, where he wasn't, his, his talent wasn't really acknowledged. Um, nobody really um, backed him or understood what, or saw a, a bigger or a brighter future for him. All I really wanted was an opportunity to show people what I can do. The experience and learning will come after that. My biggest objective was to just make a name for myself and show the raw talent that I have. Junior may have had the raw talent to make an impression with the ball as a fast bowler, but the professional elements of the game at this new level were still unknown. I think any professional sport is very competitive um, and it's pretty cutthroat in terms of your performance and your contract. Uh, you know, often as, as young cricketers you come in and you get offered a contract which is not worth a lot of money but you sort of fight, fighting with a lot of uh, players to get that, that small contract. All contracts are mainly one year based so you know it's based on performance and you have to work to get it back or you move on and you do something else. We as provincial cricketers we often used to go down to UJ Nets, we, which was our club that we played for in the university. The manager of UJ, Mr. Carl Maton, was, was quite a hard guy, and he almost uh, made sure that we had to come down to training, otherwise we weren't gonna get selected on the weekend. And one of the key attributes that Carl had is he had a very keen eye for, for talent from the non-traditional schools. So we often would go down to Nets, and, and, and next thing, these sort of random bowlers would be bowling at us. I think it was only when I came to UJ my first year where they took footage of all the bowlers and their actions and to sort of see, you know, where their injury concerns were. And yeah, and that was the first time someone mentioned to me and said, do you know that you bowl off the wrong foot? And I was like, you know, in my head, I thought my bowling action was like Dale Stane because that's how it felt. And, you know, that was probably the first time I ever got to see myself bowl. We had to go put in the hard yards at the club. So one of those days was when Mr. Junior Dala started bowling to us at the Nets. Jumped off the wrong foot and, and before you knew it, the ball was flying past your ears. So that was really the first time that I noticed Junior. Um, I remember turning around in the net and, and saying to, to Carl, where, where on earth did he find this guy from? I remember my first year at Junior, I think I played second team. I kept hearing about, you know, the Stephen Cooks, the Richard Dasneys, the captain of the Gauteng Strikers. Because he was on a UJ bursary, Carl was pretty stubborn that he didn't want him to play for the provincial team too quickly. He wanted to first uh, have him at, at UJ. Um, and the funny part about that is that he, he often kept him in the second team. He really he kept him in the background, uh, much to Junior's disgust at the time. We actually wanted to pick him earlier than he eventually made his debut. The one year I got picked to play in the first team and Richard was captain and those guys were intimidating. They played cricket completely differently to what I had known it um, back in the East Rand. So yeah it, was, yeah, it was intimidating. And with Richard, he's got this kind of poker face where he doesn't give too much away. But also, even when he captained me, I didn't even think I spoke much to him. He just told me, gave me the ball, and I just tried to execute sort of what he had given me. Junior, coming from non-traditional school, uh, he didn't always have the, the basics or the ethics around, around cricket. So I try to keep it as simple as possible for him. And, and I just said to him, you know, his, his role in the team, his job is to bowl fast, and I'll just tell him where to bowl. Yeah, made my debut at the Wanderers against Free State. I don't remember too much about it. I mean, just be playing at the Wanderers was obviously something big for me. I set some uh, outrageous fields at the Wanderers and yeah, he, he, got, a, he got a few guys um, sort of jumping around because he had this sort of express pace and the, and the fact that he, uh, he was unique and that he jumped off the wrong foot, um, that um, you know, set him apart, which worked out beautifully um, for him and sort of just set, set his career um, going on the, on the right foot or maybe the wrong foot, I don't know if we, we, what we could say with him there. When I was playing, you know, amateur cricket for the Gauteng Strikers, fortunately we had a coach that, you know, just wanted me to bowl fast. And, you know, when I started taking wickets and started, you know, getting up to, you know, being noticed by probably the Lions, then you start hearing people in the high ups, you know, saying, well, I'll probably never make it because of my action. Um, there's too much wrong with me. 
Yeah, so that was always going to be the challenge for Junior is that because he uh, was was unique, you know, his bowling action wasn't the conventional one. Potential coaches might want to change him. From a technical point of view, yes, he jumps off the wrong foot. However, he, the fundamentals of his bowling action are, are very good. He keeps everything in a straight line, which is, from an injury prevention point of view, very good. It's, it's weird. Uh, a lot of people said I'd be injured, um, but yeah, I. None of my injuries have been a result of my bowling action. I think it's become so natural to me that, yeah, I think there are guys with far more conventional actions that get more injured than I do. The people that wanted to change his action just wanted to change it because it wasn't normal. But we were pretty determined and, and luckily Junior felt the same way, that he didn't feel that he needed to change it. There were a lot of doubts and I think, you know, probably that's also what prompted my move to go into the Titans is that I knew for, for the betterment of my cricket, I needed to find an environment where people will just help me improve on what I have and guide me without trying to change what makes me me. His thinking in coming across the Titans was not just to get into the Titans team. He knew that if he breaks into this Titans team and performs for the Titans, there's a good chance he'll play for South Africa. On the, the exterior, I try and, and portray calmness. I, I do believe that the mood of the change room revolves around key figures. You don't want players feeling extra pressure going out into the middle because you're sort of stressing on the side. That's not to say that you can't show emotion. That's not to say that you don't care. And there certainly are times where you sort of want to kick the cooler box over in the change room. But, um, you know, there's, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a believer that you're only allowed to have two blowouts uh, a season as a coach because otherwise it, it won't carry the, the sort of weight that it, that it has to have. So you've got to be very, you've got to pick and choose when you're going to have those blowouts. When you sort of captained our team, the, the, the amateur side, um, Kazi and Strikers, yes, he did have a lot of friends, but ultimately his goal was to win and obviously to make the players around him successful because that would make mean he's a successful captain. So yes, we would have fun moments, but we also had moments where he was very honest with me. Now that he's in the you know, coaching setup at the Titans, he's the first one to tell me you know, when I've sort of gone out of line, not even from a cricket point of view, just from a, a human point of view. He's someone that puts me in line very quickly, but he also understands me in the sense that he can sort of push my boundaries without, you know, being too extreme um, and then sort of finding that happy medium with me. But I mean, that's a relationship that we've had for almost close to 10 years now. The one thing I was always with Junior is I said, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. I'm gonna be as open and honest with him as possible. We discussed as a sort of leadership group, myself and the coach and, and one or two other senior players that that we'll look at Junior as, as a bit of a, a, a good cop, bad cop situation. And often as captain on the field, I was bad cop. So Junior often thought that I was a little bit hard on him, um, but that was all part of the plan because we sort of thought there was bigger things to come from Junior than just playing uh, sort of provincial cricket. Um, we thought he could make a big impact on, on franchise cricket and international cricket. A good coach and a good mentor is someone that can take even the most average um, player and try to bring out the best, um, you know, the best performances. I mean, you can be a good coach and mentor with a superstar, but a good mentor is someone that can, even on your down days, try to bring even that extra 5% that will make that bad day a little bit better. Being an individual sport which, um, you know, looks at numbers in terms of success, um, there's often a lot of failures that come along the way. So dealing with failures um, and not having that fear of failure is a big attribute in terms of, uh, you know, moving, moving your career forward. Um, but I think some key attributes would, would definitely be, uh, you know, having grit, having good determination. Um, those, those are really key attributes in the South African con context in particular because it is a tough system and very cutthroat. You sort of set your goals up to play for South Africa or to play for the Titans, but um, sometimes you also don't understand what, uh, what comes with that, you know. Uh, you know, with the, with the good comes the bad, so, you know, when you know, when you perform, you're the, you're the best in the world. And, uh, you know, when you, when you don't, you probably don't deserve to be in the team. Um, and sort of like learning to deal with outside influence because up until you make it, it's, you know, it's all about you and, you know, you're your own motivator um, and you're your own harshest critic. But 
once you start making Cert Top, you know, you have thousands, hundreds of thousands of other people um, that become that for you. So it's, you know, sort of learning that skill to, to, to block those things out. Back in the day, my dad actually went into exile to Zambia and um, sort of met my mom there somewhere in 1990, um, like a few months after I was born. Obviously, all the apartheid laws, um, you know, sort of ended and um, they were welcomed back into South Africa. My dad just used to watch test cricket sort of every, you know, every weekend. Like I was this kid that used to want to watch cartoons at 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturdays. And, you know, my dad used to watch test cricket. So I was like, well, let me actually just find out what this game of cricket is all about. And then that's where sort of my understanding of cricket started. I was playing a I think I was playing a four-day game for the Titans, or could be in a 50-over game. And for some reason, Mark Boucher, you know, when I was bowling, um, kept saying, listen, Junior, don't overexert yourself. Um, you know, just look after yourself. If you saw, you can come off the field. Um, but he was acting like very, very different. You know, little did I know, um, you know, the selectors had obviously called um, the coaches um, at the Titans saying that I had been selected for that T20 game. A big driving force in his success was always, um, you know, that his his dad had this vision for him and wanted him to play cricket, and and be the best version of himself on the field. My dad really wanted me to play cricket. He loved it so much. So my day before the approaches was it was a little bit surreal. Um, it didn't show too much emotion up until I obviously called my mom. Um, it was my dad's dream for me to play for South Africa. And then, you know, when she broke down crying on the phone, that's when you know it sort of the whole realization that, you know, I sort of, you know, that lifelong dream to play for South Africa has sort of come true. You get in the team bus, you know, the Metro police meet you on the highway. Uh, you know, you have this VIP escort. You get to the stadium two hours before the stadium's packed. Um, you know, so all those emotions were something like very different. I don't even remember the, the game, you know, fortunately, uh, we bowled first and, you know, just before we went to bowl, Otis Gibson said, you know, by the way, you're opening the bowling. And um, it probably helped me because, you know, I don't have too much time to think about what, you know, the crowd, because um, I'd never played in front of a sold out stadium in my life. So um, I didn't have enough time, you know, on the boundary to think about all my surroundings. I could just focus on running up and bowling. I got a little bit carried away in that first game, but it was, it was a great experience, something that, apart from the opposition being a lot better than what I was used to, I felt the cricket, it pretty much stayed the same. It was, but everything surrounding it, the hype. Multiple Twitter messages and Instagram messages that you get um, and dealing with, you know, 30 seconds of fame um, that you instantly get when you, when you get that call up. Those things were hard to deal with, but from a cricket point of view, you know, again, it was, the same motto that I used when I made my amateur debut is just to show the world what you can do and then you'll learn along the way and get better with experience. Junior can only be an inspiration to show what hard work and determination can, where it can actually get you. You don't have to go to a traditional school, you don't have to have that sort of, let's call it that silver spoon upbringing that you can go the long road in order to reach your dreams. Playing in the IPL was, was weird and how I got the call was obviously played the, the three match T20 series against India and I was tired leading wicket taker in that series and I had calls from two IPL teams. I was just told to go to the Indian Embassy, get my visa ready because I could be flying and then as I got my visa I got a phone call from Delhi saying listen we've booked a flight for you to come to India tomorrow. I remember landing in India. Delhi were playing, I think, the Mumbai Indians. And I decided I'm not gonna go sleep at the hotel. I wanna experience the IPL before I actually am part of it. And yeah, it was it was surreal. Like I got to see Mitchell Johnson, you know, play, but you know, be in a change room and seeing him as, as an opposition, someone that I've admired in the way he went about his cricket. And then you all of a sudden surrounded by superstars. You know, Ricky Ponting was my coach someone where in the, you know, I remember the 4-3-8 game, you know, smashed South Africa at the Wanderers and here he was giving me advice about um, cricket and, you know, just, I remember I was freaking out just by him sending me a WhatsApp uh, and having his phone number. So I was like, okay, well, that's my claim to fame. My career can end now. So it was, it was such a nice experience.
This next stage of focus saw the broadening of his professional relationship with Richard, who had now transitioned from player to full-time coach. You know, now I, I find myself as part of the coaching staff at the Titans with him as a player, and, and to see how much he's grown over the last sort of 10, 12 years is, is very pleasing. So I think in terms of character, he's, he's pretty much the same, which is a good attribute of his, that, you know, his success hasn't really changed the way he acts or the way he, he goes about his stuff. But on field, he's obviously grown a hell of a lot in terms of his professionalism, his training, his understanding of his body. You know, he knows what, what it takes to be ready for, for a four-day game or, or, or for a, a one-day international game. And he's, you know, his sort of game smarts have developed a hell of a lot. In the early bits of his career, he, he was very sort of reliant on senior players to tell him what to do. But now he's one of those guys that are helping the youngsters along with what the learnings that he's had over the years. He's now a, a leader in that department in not only the Titans change room, but in, I think, in South African cricket. At times in my career, especially now that I've made it, you know, from that first ball, you're looking to replicate all of those, um, all of those performances. So I think um, maybe not trying to look for those big performances is something that I'm also starting to learn. You know, you train, you do all your preparation, and it's actually just about trusting all those weeks and months of preparation that you've had, and also accepting that you will have good days and bad days, but that's not a reflection on how you've performed or how you've trained it. Just like you take your wins, sometimes, you know, take your losses, but also reflect on those losses. That transition of actually now being a senior player, you actually think that you must take on more than you, you actually need to. I just need to take care of, you know, you know, my own space, the way I perform, the way I train, and lead from that aspect. And through that, everyone will see that I'm a senior player, as opposed to, you know, trying to be man of the match every game. So yeah, being a senior player is actually just being, for me, being consistent in who I am and consistent in how I train and you know, not making sure that my highs are not too high and my lows are not too low and just being self-aware and being aware of where other people's spaces um, are within the team and you know, to the best of my ability, try to, you know, to help them without you know, taking away from myself. Junior has never been somebody that uh, has looked at any any person's name or any any player that he played against. He's never he, di he didn't really care who was bowling at. He he um, he just wanted to bowl quickly and and wanted to to get the next guy in. He's still that same humble guy from Springs, really. And I think there's still a lot more to come from him um, over the next few years, um, trying to get back into that national team and and getting a a consistent run in the national team. He's been a little bit unfortunate with, uh, with COVID, um, personally with him picking up COVID a few times. And, you know, during this, this, these last two years where there just hasn't been a hell of a lot of cricket, he's unfortunately been sidelined due to, due to a few of the uncontrollable things. Controlling the controllables for me growing up was, while these guys are on tour and maybe getting smashed, I can get better. It's something I use now um, with selections. If I don't go on tour, I just use it as motivation to work harder and to make sure that when I do get my opportunity again, that I am ready. So controlling the controllable means taking ownership, not just about your performance, but of your own emotions. And yes, there is disappointment initially, but try not to, to, to live in that disappointment because it's just about you know taking a step back and saying, they can only pick 15, and that's my motto. They can only pick 15 and control what you can control. Junior and Richard may have had very different starts to their careers and seen the game of cricket in a different way. But with a shared focus for success, their individual attributes have always found a way to combine professionally. We look forward to watching Junior continue his fight for his place in the national team. For more episodes of Mind and Field, visit profmed.co.za. Mind and Field, brought to you by Profmed, the intelligent medical aid for professionals.